Hi, my name is Andrea Weiss, and I'm a co-director of and professor in the City College of New York MFA Film Program. I'd like to welcome you to CUNY TV Presents, an initiative focusing on emerging filmmakers and their exceptional cinematic work. Today's conversation focuses on the talented City College MFA filmmakers. You are about to watch a collection of outstanding City College MFA thesis films from as far back as 2013. These films have been screened at numerous film festivals around the world. Let me introduce you to our panel of filmmakers, all City College MFA alumni, Josiah Johnson, Haruka Motohashi, and Razid Season. Haruka Motohashi records her experience on a journey to reconcile with her estranged mother who is having hip surgery in Tokyo, an autobiographical documentary that shows how mother-daughter relationships can be charming yet strained by physical and emotional distance. So my question to start with you, Haruka, your film tells such a personal story, and yet we can all relate to it, despite it being set in another country, another language, another culture. Why do you think it succeeds as such a universal story? I'm glad you say like that. <laughs> I, I'm, that was my thesis, and I still feel it was successful. There is a, a mother, and there is a daughter. I exist in the film only through the relationship, and which can be applied to anyone, maybe. I wanted to be as honest as possible, and I honest, wanted to be as truthful as possible to tell a story. So, and I wanted to be as simple and as abstract possible so that you could feel if you were my situation, um, how you would have done. あんまり美しくはないんだけどもね。ほら、私のもう前と違うし、そんなに迷惑かけるわけじゃないから、ちょっとそれよりもう4年以上も全然会ってないし、それは、うん、そうなんだけども。You mentioned as honest as possible and I think that's a big part of it is that you are so honest even about the really difficult parts. Mm. And you know, we all have troubled relationships. Mm. And so mm. even if our troubled relationship is a different kind of trouble, <laughs> we're still you're still allowing us into that mm. and it's very powerful. Mm. I wanted to ask you a follow up. Uh, why did you feel compelled to put that personal anguish into public view? That's a good question. It's hard to answer because uh, it's not reality TV type of work that I created. And I actually want to mention about some influence that I got from art school. I remember the first assignment that I got was to read um, Augustine's Confessions. It's a classic book wrote about his confessions and in the Middle Ages. What powerful about memoir is that even if it's going inside, deep inside of someone's mind, it offers something really emotional bond to the someone else. And that sometimes we feel so embarrassed to read someone's personal story or personal life. But I found it's painful, but it's also really intimate. So I want to do something through the structure or, uh, of the cinema and to kind of like invite someone to feel it. So, I mean, I didn't meant to expose myself, like to put my selfie on it. So that's maybe my Excuse. Excuse. 
元気なうちにやってあげられることってないからなかなかねそう一緒に歩いたりとかいずれ私だって死んじゃうんだよいずれ一人になるんだよジャザイア。I, I tried to stay focused on my, my work, my school work, but it still affected me. At the same time, I was grieving and didn't know that I was grieving because I just lost my cousin. And so I,、um, when I realized that, I just channeled all those emotions into, into the writing and production of the film. Well, I do have a daily exercise routine, Pilates, and a personal trainer. Where's your honey? There's a fantastic yoga retreat that Richard and I would be happy to. Your film's called The Wealthiest Man in the World, and of course, he's in a pretty tragic situation. Can you talk about the title? Sure.、Uh, so, it felt excessive <laughs> for a short film, so I just wanted the audience to, to feel like, okay, maybe this film is about excess. But、um, in the film, we, we define wealth as, as love and friendship, it's, it's invaluable. So, Is that optimism something that's important to you in, as a filmmaker in terms of you know, how you see things and how you want to present stories? Yes, I, I try to include heart into the story.、Um, sometimes we go through these, these situations that cause us to be sad, and it's okay to be sad and to grieve, but you know, it's also okay to have unity and to have hope. And so that's why I wanted the film to, to convey that you can be hopeful even though we are going through. And it's something that I want to do. I want to always have heart in my, in my stories. Borrowers with adjustable rate mortgages who had been planning to sell or refinance their homes at a higher price were stuck with homes worth less than expected, along with mortgage payments they could not afford. Did you ever think we'd end up the way we did? What, is me as your tenant and you as the establishment? No, I'm serious, Dan. I lost my path. I lost my way on my path to enlightenment. You lost your way on your path to freedom and maturity? No, I lost my way on my path to nirvana and moksha. Oh, I forgot you believe in several Eastern religions. Yeah, I forgot you w a s a materialist. I forgot to tell you to f off. <laughs> wait, wait, with all the material you have in this house? <laughs> Razid, you are next. Your film is Kaddish. Akiva is arrested by a Nazi soldier while looking for his mother's grave. While in custody, he meets an elderly rabbi、uh, who has similar losses during the Holocaust. Together, they hope to escape from Poland to the Promised Land, even if it will be their last journey. My first question for you 
is, so you're a Bangladeshi filmmaker born in Abu Dhabi. Why did you decide to make a film set in Poland during the Holocaust? I grew up in Bangladesh. <clears throat> I was born in Abu Dhabi, but my, my country suffered from genocide also, and we lost three million people. It was like long before I was born, but we grew, I, we grew up in the history. So this always chased me, the atrocities, genocide in, you know, around the world and, and it, from any source, any, 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 any cause, right? And people die, kill, they get killed. So this always chased me, ha haunts me. And when I was making film, uh, for this thesis, I thought like I would do something like, you know, I will tell the story of uh, genocide of my country, and I, I think it's, it was quite impossible to go and find the same setting. So I thought I would make film on the Holocaust because this is one of the you know events that uh, made me sad when I thought about it. Is so I made this. Halt die Zwillinge auf. Und du bist die zwei nach Krakau. Ist nein, 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 Can you talk about all that work you did going with the research in particular, the time period, the cultural values and customs of your protagonists in the film, even the language? At that time, many people said you were being too ambitious. Uh, why you were doing this is impossible. Look at the films uh, that that tells the story of Holocaust, and and they are made in English. Why you were, you know, picking up a language that barely people speak nowadays, and um, it's gonna be too many challenges you're gonna face. Let's say Nazi costumes. Firstly, I tried to find out the rental. Houses and they said one set of costume like the Nazi costumes without the badges, no badges, which I collected from Europe, China, and different places. You know, over the one year, the pre-production was one year. So they said it's four thousand six hundred, one set. I just need, to rent the costume. Just to rent, and wow. I need six set. I don't have budget. <laughs> so what I did, I I saw that. You, s you sewed I, it yourself. I, I, I sewed myself, you know. So I collected over the years from different places, uh, not from the U.S., all those um, badge that Nazi would, you know, if it is a second, you know, uh, commanding officer, that is squad, like, you know, all these details I wanted to go. And even the, uh, you know, uh, detention, um, you know, camps that they, uh, uh, concentration camp, and region-wise they had the, um, uh, a Star of David, a Star of David on, on the Jews and the detainees, right? And this used to uh, vary the color. So we, I, my plot was Krakow region and this uh, southern Poland, like uh, Miejo. So Miejo, they have a Star of David blue. If you go to Hungary, it becomes yellow. So it took one year to do the pre-production. It's because I did not have all the people that I need, at least. Uh, and it was uh, stressful. I don't even know how many languages you speak, but I'm sure in this whole list of languages you speak, Yiddish was not one of them. It, yeah. <laughs> Talk about how, why you made the film in Yiddish and how uh, you learned Yiddish. I write Hebrew, and um, um, the, in, in Kaddish you see the Tumba Stone, which I made that, uh, you know, um, I wrote, I carved that, um, uh, in Hebrew also. It's a verse from Old Testament. You know, it says, uh, so, uh, and then um, I, I don't know Yiddish, but you know, uh, for this film I was trying to learn the phrases, you know, like, shine them dunk, you know, like, uh, you know, and so, uh, so like this, and then the main problem was I was not finding the actors. So um, when I found some Yiddish actors here in, in New York, and uh, they were asking for a lot of money and I can't afford them. 
So because they work in big productions, Netflix, Amazon, these kind of big, they are exposed to all kinds of commercial medias and money and e people like me and coming with all these dreams and they are trying to take a hey, Bangladeshi trying to make this. Oh, no, you can't. They knock me down. No, 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 we can't. You know, no free, no. I, money, how much you can afford, I, you know, no. So um, I found Akiva. He is an immigrant, came from French. I said, okay. So he has Jewish background. He knows Hebrew. Uh, he doesn't speak Hebrew, but he, he can read Hebrew scriptures. So I said, okay, that's an accent. So uh, let's try it. So that's how I found Rabbi came for uh, came in the audition for uh, Nazi uh, character. When yeah, when I saw him, I said, "Listen." He said, "I speak German." I said, "That's a good thing. If you speak German, you can speak uh, Yiddish." Yiddish. Just... And he said, "I am secular. I, I have Jewish background, but I am secular. I can't be rabbi." I said, "Please," you know. So I made him. Uh, you know, I convinced him. <laughs> so, so that's how it worked. And then I found, I worked in Borough Park, Brooklyn, talking to many people um, to find out like who can help me with Yiddish translation. Like uh, I need to record them, you know, because I will train my actors. Same accent I needed. Yiddish varies, you know. The standard Yiddish is Lithuanian Yiddish. But you know, German in Ashkenaz, like, you know, in Poland, it has dialect, you know, um, inse, unse, like, you know, the suffix, prefix, is changes. Du hast gesehen, man war in Zwilling. Akiva. walked into a uh, bakery shop. There is a guy, he speaks Yiddish. He, he inherited his, his bakery shop. It's the third generation of Ashkenaz here. He doesn't speak English at all. So when I was talking to him in English, he thought I came, to, came for money. He opened the drawer and he was giving me money. He said, oh, you take 20, 20, 20, go, go, go. I said, no, no, no. I said, oh my God, like he's gonna call, call maybe. You know, we call cops because he thought maybe I came to rob. Uh, because he was not able to understand. So I got a guy outside the street. I called him. I said, do you speak Yiddish? He said, yes. He said, can you talk to him? And he was translating. So he said he thought you came to rob his <laughs> store. <laughs> he did not understand. I said, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But, you know, but I bought Wait, it. Just to be clear, he thought, you under he thought you came to rob the store because, because you did I'm not speak Yiddish and all his customers yeah. sp spoke Yiddish. Yeah, and he <laughs> speaks Yiddish. He doesn't speak any word in English. That's right. what that guy told me. And he thought, like, I am speaking something English. I have a man with me also. And he thought like we are like bad boys here, you know, asking for okay. money, a donation, you know, some kind of what they call. And now he can translate for me because he doesn't understand how can I communicate. I found a man in the, in, in the salon. He was, you know, having, and he, he was not looking at me. He said, you want, you want not kosher? Mm. I said, no, please. You know, I need this. I am in trouble. And I would just record you, please. So he thought I'm Christian. He said, well, you know, Old Testament is like more like the New Testament, you know that. I said, I'm not Christian. I'm from Muslim background. So he was so shocked. He said, okay, I will help you. So he, I recorded him. He sent me all his uh, dialogue, you know, uh, recorded himself. So then we spent time with these two people who mainly speak Yiddish um, in the film. And, and they, they came very it. organic, yeah. like it sounded like they are because I had a screening in Holocaust Museum there. People came who were Holocaust survivors also and speak Polish Yiddish, uh, you know, and they, they thought they are like Yiddish speaker, like from Poland. Ich 
התקדל והתקדה השם רבה. ועל מה דיברה קירותי, ועל מי איך מלכותי. חיי חול וביומי חול וחיי די חול בית ישראל. הגלה ובזמן. I have a question for each of you, which is just to speak briefly, if you would, about where you are now in terms of filmmaking, if you're working on something new or what's next. Okay, sure. Sure. I'm, uh, I, I do some freelancing, but, um, and I'm working in uh, two, two projects, a pre-production, early stages of two projects, yeah. Haruka, what have, what have you been doing? Oh, yes. Um, the first of all, I'm making a, my own film, um, so, and then, which also about myself, but I don't appear in the film. So I shot both digital camera and the 35 millimeter film, and then it's kind of post-production, but I'm really, really struggling to make it um, because I don't know what's happening in the film because it's really about myself. <laughs> so, and then the, I shot when I returned to Tokyo last year. So, which is one it's going. And also professionally to make a living, I do post-production. And so I did one features color collection, which is about kind of like an opera film. Op so, which was fun to listen to music or song, and uh, in the meantime, I do color collection. So, yeah. Well, good luck with the film. Thank you. Razid? Uh, yeah, I shot a film recently, and uh, Elijah, and uh, we shot the last scene on July 9th in Connecticut. Elijah talks about a, um, um, a South Asian second generation born and brought up in America who is defying a gender norm and coming out as a transsexual, transgender. So this is the story now, uh, film I'm working on. And the title's Elijah? Elijah, yeah. Okay, we'll watch for it. Thank you yeah, very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I have one last question and then we're gonna wrap things up. Uh, let's start with you, Josiah. How do you feel your time at City College helped you to find your voice and grow as a filmmaker, if you feel it did. It did. I uh, was very timid and shy, especially about my work, my art. Um, but just City College just embraced me. I had more of a writer's background and just um, being able to express myself through film, through, through images, just, just was um, the confidence that I needed. So I, I appreciate that experience, but also just having diversity and um, high, having a cast and crew who are diverse was important to me. And it's something that I try to do with future projects just to make sure I have that cast and crew that, that are diverse so, and to make impactful films. Haruka, same question to you. My background is actually fine art to study. And uh, I was wandering around what, what, how to survive. But uh, at the City College of New York City, I learned the things that I just needed, the way to, to get job. And because the way, as a filmmaker, I can stand on the ground. That made my life actually the, my, my path to be here. So yeah, that was so helpful for me. Razid, you are next. How do you feel your time at City College helped you grow as a filmmaker? Yeah, I mean, I learned a lot. I, you know, I had been a student of film studies also before that. So um, learning film and doing quite some time then came to finally to City College. I learned and I met many people from different backgrounds and different skills. I would, I would say that's a huge addition, uh, you know, what I have achieved, whatever I have come uh, to know, like all my life, you know, searching for film and learning film. So, that, so I'm, I'm grateful to CCNY in many ways. I mentioned it to a professor. I said, to me, diploma is nothing. My, my MFA is you. 
So Andrea Ways, you were not my direct professor, but it's still after that we came to know many ways. I thank you so much. I learned and, and uh, were supported by you and CCNY in many ways, and thank you so much. That's my MFA also. Thank you. Okay, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you to our guests. It was really wonderful having you and talking to you. I wish you the best of luck in your careers. Please spread the word about our exceptionally talented City College MFA filmmakers and support their film careers. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Thank you all for watching.